It's not about motivation. When is need discipline? Wake up and win today. <laughs> discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Box Row, Mr. Gareth A. Davis. Uh, Gareth, you lit up. Do you want to let the fans know if you've splashed out in an expensive light by the looks of it? I've got microphones, lights, everything. Camera, lights, camera, action, baby. Literally like, yeah, I feel like I'm stood, sat in your living room, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. No, you're not. What, what's happened to the flowers? The vase is gone. The vase is, <laughs> I've just changed my flowers over. There's some flowers over there. Okay. Um, but um, yeah. Good stuff. The vase, uh, I'm in the vase once we finish the interview. Good stuff, man. Uh, I know you've got some stuff to do, so we'll fire through some stuff and um, some questions. I've got some from the fans, you know, uh, the last couple we've as done. Ever. As uh, ever. As ever. There were some really sleazy ones last time, but I've got some different ones this time. No more sleaze for us. No more sleaze for us, Boxing King Media. Right, let's let's see what we've got today. So uh, one of the fans is saying, Gareth is the kind of guy to add delivery instructions to his Just Eat order. I never order Just Eat. All right. Uh, Gareth is the kind of person that would have a chandelier in his house. You've got a chandelier. I have. I did in my last house. What did I do with it? What did I do with it? I do because we didn't keep it in the house. I think we sold it, but there was a chandelier. Quite right. Well done. There you go. They know you too well. Uh, Gareth is the kind of guy to always say gracias to the waiter in Nando's. Absolutamente gracias, camarero. Digo yo in, in Nando's. I've only been to Nando's once, by the way. It's amazing. No way. Once. Why is that? I'm not a big chicken. It's a chicken place, isn't it? I'm not a big chicken guy. Okay. So I thought you'd be a fan of uh, Nando. I don't know. I've never met anyone that doesn't like Nando's. Um, no, I didn't, I didn't like it. I, I hadn't really ever been to it. I've been once, just been once. It was very good, but I'm not a big, it's a chicken place. I'm not a big chicken guy. Okay. G Gareth is that posh kid uh, at school who always brings up his gap year to China. Uh, no, I went to China after my degree. I didn't have a gap year. I went straight to university, did my did my degree of four years with a year in Spain. And then I went to China for a year, believe it or not, after. <laughs> I did okay. go for a year in China um, yeah. in 1988 to 1989, which ended with Tiananmen Square, and I was reporting on it, believe it or not. Okay. Um, Gareth is the kind of guy to greet his housekeeper silently. Correct. Every, well, especially when we're doing an interview and, and she turns up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone reckons, I bet Gareth drives a, a convertible Audi TT in yellow. No, I've got a, an old blue Jaguar XK8 and a knockabout VW Touareg for my paddle boards and my bikes. Okay. I've got a little motorbike tucked away as well. But there you go. Too much information. Way too much. Let's jump onto the boxing because there'll be somebody sat yeah. on earth are we asking Gareth A. Davis all these crazy questions. It's because people in the comments are making these uh, um, suggestions and I think it's only right that we ask Gareth so you can clarify it uh, so Gareth one of the first things I want to speak to you about is you know I had the uh, privilege of interviewing Roy Jones Jr a couple of days ago who randomly was in Sheffield I saw that I saw Sheffield. it yeah yeah he wanted to visit the Ingle gym didn't he which is nice of him because he, yeah. he knows the history of Brendan the late great Brendan Ingle and I know you're friends with John and doing sorry with Dominic and doing a series with him I'm so glad he went there because there's so much history in the place and it's transformed thousands of lives. And I was very good friends with Brendan Ingle, and I am now with Dominic, actually, and John. Um, mm -hmm. I like them very much, the Ingle family. It, it was fascinating to see, like, an American legend's perspective of, like, a, a gym. Because we normally hear about, you know, people from the UK wanting to go across to the wild card, the Mayweather gym. But to see an American want to come here to go visit a gym, it was quite interesting to see that. Um, I, I asked him a, a point about weight loss because obviously he was uh, well known for blowing up no well, i wouldn't say use the term blowing up but he put on loads of size he went to heavyweight uh, won a title then he came back down a lot of people said he wasn't the same fighter but the weight the numbers in weight that he dropped are very similar to what tyson fury has been dropping and obviously putting on and obviously I, I asked him about the benefits and the negatives of what tyson's is just about to do and um, he, he basically pointed out that he lost muscle which is why he was depleted and he's saying the fact that Tyson's losing fat, it won't make a difference. It'll make him a better fighter. Yeah, I think he's right. But I don't think Tyson Fury should be too light. 
I mean, if you remember that Roy was a very muscled fighter and he got very big to fight John Ruiz at heavyweight. I think it was John Ruiz from memory and, um, and uh, you know, go up the weight divisions. And he wasn't the same when he came back down. Um, I mean, we saw that in many fights. I mean, Roy went on for years and years and years, and thankfully he's not fighting anymore. But um, I thought I agree with him. But I think the key with Tyson Fury is that he doesn't go too far under 19 stone. Because I think when he's 18 and a half stone, he's, he's about right, 18, 10. Um, he's a very big man, a naturally big man, big boned. And I think he'll want to use his, and he's got a great engine anyway. Um, so, you know, he'll want to use that size and weight to his advantage against Alexander Usyk in Riyadh on May the 18th. You know, that's been the narrative where we've all been kind of predicting, well, not me, but people have been predicting that Tyson's going to use his size, he's going to put it on Usyk. Could we see something completely different? Maybe Tyson trying to outbox him, and and if he does do that, is that a good idea? Could could he outbox Usyk? I, I think it's a very close chess match if they box each other. Um, Usyk's got great footwork and is very elusive. You know, it wouldn't surprise me to see Tyson try and go after him. It wouldn't surprise me to see Usyk ahead after four or five rounds on points in a very close fight. I mean, I still got this weird instinct that it might be. Uh, a real razor-type, close, controversial decision that we may get a split draw or something like that, or a majority draw. Um, more likely a split draw where one judge can't separate them and the other two see one man's work as better than the other man's work. Um, they're both very good at winning rounds. They're both very good at nicking rounds because of their style, which I just have a, a, an instinct that it's going to be a very, very cagey, chess match, boxing chess match. I really do, but I may be completely wrong. We've seen Sugar Hills uh, joined uh, up camp with Tyson and yeah. they're doing a media workout in a couple of days in Morecambe. Um, what would you make of uh, the fact that he decided to stay home this time? And last time, obviously, he was willing to do like two, three months training in uh, Riyadh. And now he's probably going to fly out maybe a few weeks before. Yeah, three, four weeks before. I think it's very warm out there. So, I mean... They're going to acclimatise. I think they're going to do about, I've heard three or four weeks. I obviously, we'll catch up with Tyson this week um, up in Morecambe. And I imagine middle of next week, late next week, I imagine they'll head off. I mean, we're all waiting for press conferences in London, not necessarily involving Tyson Fury, but I imagine some point late next week, he'll head to Riyadh, you know, around about the 20th or something like that. Um and then and, and do nearly four weeks there. That's what I'm hearing anyway. I don't know that for absolute certainty, but that's what I'm. That's on the grapevine. Indeed. And, I then... think, and, my, and my point being, I think he's quite comfortable at home. He spent a long time preparing for this fight. Obviously, two camps since October with the fight knife and come off a couple of times. So, mm. um, obviously, it was going to be on um, December the... Was it December the 20th? No, February the 14th originally, wasn't it? And then, oh, obviously... Yeah. I've lost track right now. Well, the the other thing I want to speak to you about, yeah, either way, I, I think you, you you made that point. You know, you said their press conference is Monday. Uh, are you hearing anything, Gareth? You know, we're literally what, a week away from, uh, you know, a big press conference that's been scheduled. Well, it's not been officially announced. The five but, by five, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's not been official, but yeah, it has been mentioned in interviews that it's going to be on the fifteenth. Uh, so we're expecting five fighters lining up. Apparently, there's been promos being filmed in Bulgaria last week. So I'm guessing Eddie and Frank know who, they, who they're picking. Yeah, I imagine they do know by now. I mean, it's still a bit of a mystery with some of them. Um, they don't want to keep it a secret. Yeah, they have. But I think it's kind of moved a little bit and changed and transformed a little bit. But um, it's... Uh... It's going to be a great day. I mean, I think, you know, Better Be Evan and Bivol, I understand, are coming as well. So it's going to be a really, really good day. Ten fighters, five fights. Um, I think two of those are two of those are heavyweight. One's light heavy, one's middle, one's feather. Um, and then obviously we've got the light heavyweights in Better Be and Bivol. It's going to be a very busy day in London. Very busy. If you was to pick any, any, do you reckon any fighter might rock up on that day that'll shock people? Or do you reckon there'll all be names that we're kind of expecting anyway? Well, there's been talk about... Um, the Yard's still not clarified what he's going to do next. No, Yard, Yard and Callum Smith has been discussed. There's been Amo Williams and Hamza Shiraz, uh, Nick Ball and Ray Varg, um, Nick Ball and um, Ray Ford, although Ray F Ford ruled himself out. And then... So it'll be interesting to see who the featherweights are. I mean, there's lots of talk, I think, 
isn't there of Hergovic and Dubois, but that's not confirmed yet. And there's been talk of Gili Zhang and Wilder, although I'm not sure what card that is on exactly, but there's talk of it. It's all rumour mill. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, they've done well to keep it under wraps, and I think it'll be fascinating when 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 it's all unveiled. Indeed. Last thing I want to speak to you about before you go, because I know you've got to go in a minute, is uh, the whole Conor Ben scenario, the last we heard, that the uh, this is the weirdest thing now, because that was all from a news article. It's still not official news. We don't know... If, I don't as Eddie said it in an interview. I don't think he has. They've all just declined to comment. So no, he said he can't talk about it because it's all sub judice. Yeah. So like, you know, it's all under it the law. It just seems all all seems a bit nuts. Like you know, without well, it has been in the very start, and they've all all they've done is gone all the way around the block to the front door again, and we're back at strict liability. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the if he goes to the court of arbitration and sport, or he makes another appeal against his case or for his case. I think. You know, there's probably a thorn in the side of UCAD and um, UK anti-doping and boxing border control, and they'll take it to the nth degree now because they they want to see the case made based on strict liability, and because that that's the only way that you can you can have the veracity of a testing system and just check what people have got in their system, which is really important in our sport, which is inherently dangerous. And I'd assume, because Eddie said this as well, that nothing's been put down in place to stop him from fighting in America. So this court of arbitration thing could could take years, like these sort of things don't happen yeah. over. It could be months, could be yeah. a year plus. So do you think he'll carry on fighting? And if he does, is that is that a good move? Oh, it's so hard to call. I mean, it, you know. Because cause, cause he's, he's got this, obviously it's like a cloud, but should he stop earning money? Uh, based on no, they 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 boxed themselves into a very complex cul-de-sac mm. in saying they're not going to do the strict liability route and it's complicated it for them i don't think there's an answer at the moment i really don't think there's an answer to conor ben's situation and mm. it could play out so many different ways he could end up never fighting in the uk again he could always fight under an american license and yet his big audience is in the uk so it's it's one of those not great scenario for him Indeed, uh, Gareth, I uh, appreciate your time. I know you got to go and do some uh, uh, some stuff for your uh, other channels. Uh, I'll catch you probably Monday. Okay, lovely. Cheers, buddy. Right. Take care. Cheers. Win gold now. IPMB is giving away 524 karat gold coins to our token holders worth over $2,000 each. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you very much for this uh, great news. It's amazing. It's never been easier to own gold, so join the raffle now. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.